Hello, uh, this is Steve Andriatis, a public affairs specialist with the US Copyright Office. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, which will now begin. Um, during today's program, attendees may submit questions using the Q&A panel accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, we will answer questions after the presentation is complete. However, we may not answer all of the submitted questions during the webinar. Uh, furthermore, this session is being recorded. So if you choose to participate, any of your questions will be included in the recording as part of the record. And with that, I, now I would like to welcome our presenters for today. Today, we'll hear from Register of Copyright Shira Promoter, Sean Gallagher, Management and Program Analyst in the Office of Copyright Records, and Mike Nybeck, IT Division Chief in the Library of Congress's Office of the Chief Information Officer. With that, I'll pass it to Register Promoter. Thank you, Steve, and welcome everyone to today's webinar on the Copyright Office Recordation System. Back in April 2020, we launched a limited pilot of an online recordation system to replace the current paper-based process. And that was an important milestone for the Copyright Office as it was the first step in our planned enterprise copyright system, uh, the first part of it that made its way to the public. And as you may know, the enterprise copyright system, or as we call it, the ECS, uh, will integrate and improve on all of the office's technology systems. Over the past two years uh, since that time, an invited group of 80 organizations and more than 200 individuals have used the online pilot to submit documents. And already there have been some notable achievements. Uh, most importantly uh, for everyone, uh, the average processing times for these documents have been reduced from months to a mere weeks. Uh, we've also received constructive feedback that's helped us fine tune the system's functionality. So with all of the lessons learned, we are now ready to expand access to the online recordation pilot uh, to the general public. And this is a significant step forward. Uh, first, for our strategic goal of making the copyright system as understandable and accessible to as many members of the public as possible. And second, to our goal of continuously updating and improving our services. So let me now turn the webinar over to Sean Gallagher, Management and Program Analyst in our Office of Copyright Records, who will go into more detail about the new online system and how the general public can now get involved. Sean. Thank you so much for that introduction, Shira. Uh, so you should be seeing on the slides right now, Can Can Yu, who is our product owner, uh, also a management and program analyst here at the United States Copyright Office. Uh, myself, Sean Gallagher, communications for the Office of Copyright Records. I'll be walking you through today's presentation. Uh, and then on the call, um, all of this would not have been possible, uh, not only with Shira's support, but also with the support of Denise Wofford, the Director of Copyright Records as well as Sylvester Simpkins, the head of the recordation division here at the office. Uh, we also have uh, Mike Nybeck from the Office of the Chief Information Officer available today to help answer questions uh, that may come up during the presentation. So today, as we're moving through the webinar, uh, we'd like to discuss briefly why we have uh, embarked on this modernization journey. We'll cover uh, some of the user-centric design and the office's use of login.gov. We'll present some slides from the recordation system itself to show you some of the new features. We'll review the special pilot program rules. Uh, again, some of the system highlights, uh, address some of the more frequently asked questions, and then provide some next steps before we open up for the question and answer part of the webinar. So why modernize? Uh, currently, the uh, recording of documents with the Copyright Office is one of the few paper-only processes remaining here in the office. Uh, there's manual processing of the receipt of those documents and payments. Our staff manually ingest those titles, and there are long processing times due to the amount of time it takes mail to physically get here uh, to Capitol Hill. Uh, again, we are also working with some outdated IT systems that are unable to keep up not only with our customers' demands, but also with the needs of the office. 
so it seemed like a, a great time uh, at the beginning of the Office's enterprise copyright system to begin to modernize the recordation system. So we began uh, modernizing the recordation system with our pilot program, which was released to a limited set of users in April of 2020. Uh, again, this limited pilot program uh, was contained to transfers of copyright ownership and other documents that fell under Title 17, Section 205. Uh, we did include special handling requests in the pilot program, uh, as well as special uh, rules that govern participation in that pilot. Uh, notices of termination were not included in the initial pilot when we released. And uh, we're proud to say that so far to date, we've recorded over uh, nearly 8,000 documents through the recordation system and over 319,000 works uh, have been recorded and published into the public catalog through the system so far. So again, very excited about how the, the system has been working so far with the, the group that we invited to join us uh, in April of 2020. We've had over 80 organizations join us with over 200 individual participants. Uh, and we've seen, as Shira noted, a processing time on the scale of weeks uh, for those using the system instead of the months that you'll see through the paper submission process. Uh, we did want to put a couple of quotes up here from our pilot users. Um, we think that it, we've gained a lot of information, some really valuable feedback uh, from them on the functioning of the system. And so what we've, uh, we've reached the conclusion that at this point we should open this up to the general public. And so we're really happy to, to be releasing uh, the system quite soon. Uh, again, we mentioned the special pilot program rules. Uh, we just have a quick snapshot here. So um, for the legal folks out there, use of the recordation system is governed by these special pilot program rules for electronic recordation. You'll be able to find a link to those rules uh, as a PDF to download from the new recordation system webpage that you'll be able to access on copyright.gov. So uh, to talk a little bit about some of the user-centric design, uh, I'd like to hand it over to Mike Nybeck from the Office of the Chief Information Officer. Mike? Thank you, Sean. Um, before we take a look at the system itself, I wanted to take a little bit of a step back and talk a little bit about uh, the process for how we build uh, systems like this. Um, a, a huge component of what we do is what we call user-centered design, and that's putting the user at the center of our development of these tools. Um, at the end of the day, these are built for you and for the United States Copyright Office to process this data. So during this entire journey, we've had input from those user communities that happened through our pilot program, which I'm sure many of you participated in. We also had internal usability groups and we pull that feedback into our uh, development process to make sure that what we build meets the needs of the users. And this process will not end as we leave the pilot program. This is how we build all of our systems. So we will continue to have user outreach and accept feedback and input from our user communities to make sure the tool stays focused on what you need it to and provides the value that we hope it does. Um, and I wanna go to the next slide, which talks about uh, your kind of your first entry point into our system. Um, when we built this, tool as part of the larger enterprise copyright system, we leveraged work done by other federal agencies, in particular the GSA, in creating a unified and centralized uh, authentication and account management tool. It's called login.gov. So we leverage login.gov. So when you create a, an account on the recordation system, you're actually going to be sent over to login.gov to create your account and then sent back to the recordation system to gain access to to the, the tool. This gives us a central, again, a central tool to use. Um, the real advantage to you is login.gov is used across a lot of other federal agencies. So with one account, you can access a lot of other areas, USA Jobs, the TSA is using it for their pre-flight check, the Small Business Administration is using it. So it gives you one single account to access all those services. Within the United States Copyright Office, we're leveraging login.gov login across all of ECS. <clears throat> so once you create your recordation account, you can use that same account if you wanna use other services within ECS. So this is a, a built on the best practices around security and privacy. 
So we're really excited to leverage this to keep your credentials secure and you can be uh, uh, confident in the, uh, the your personal information will be protected uh, through this service. So hand it back to Sean so we can take a look at the actual system. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate that, uh, that introduction. Um, so let's start by taking a brief look at the system highlights. Uh, again, the, the new recordation system has quite a number of features. One of the ones that uh, we hope that you'll find the most useful is the account management. So you'll be able to set up an account and create an organization uh, and manage those users yourself. Uh, you'll be able to submit basic 205s uh, online directly through the recordation system. We have online payment collection through pay.gov. Uh, so we'll be able to pay directly through the recordation system itself. Uh, and we provide a digital certificate and digital number document when your filings have been approved for recordation. Uh, we also provide online status tracking as your submission moves through the review process at the office and a centralized messaging center for any correspondence should the need arise to correspond about your submission. There are also notifications and alerts for key events, uh, such as when your submission has been picked up by an examiner and when your submission has been approved by the office. We also have a search feature, so you'll be able to easily and quickly find uh, any of your draft or completed uh, filings within the recordation system. There are a few li limitations. Uh, at the moment, the system supports up to 10,000 works per submission. So if you do have a document to submit to the office that contains more than 10,000 works, we do ask that you continue to use the paper submission process for those uh, recorded documents that do have more than 10,000 works. Uh, again, the browser compatibility, the recordation system works with most modern browsers, including Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. We would like to note, however, that Internet Explorer is not supported. So let's take a look at what you'll see uh, in the recordation system itself once you've created your account through login.gov and logged into the system. Here we're showing a snapshot of the dashboard uh, when you first log in to your dashboard, you won't see any pre-populated filings here with the office. That'll be blank and there'll be some, some orientation text. But we did want to point out that in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a number of icons, the envelope indicating that centralized correspondence and messaging center where you'll receive any correspondence about your filings with the office. There's also the notification bell, which will alert you uh, to those specific notification key events, as well as the human icon to uh, get access to your personal account. Along the top of the application screen, you can see different statuses where you can track your service request. Uh, again, that first radio button that we have checked here is showing all of them, but you can also filter what's displayed on your dashboard by flagged drafts, pending uh, submissions, those that are in review, and those that have been closed. You'll also see that status and a bit more detail uh, underneath those columns below where you can see the actual uh, lines for the SRs. So uh, looking into the submission wizard, um, again, so we noted that you can track the status of your submission with to the office. You'll see uh, a similar tracker to show your completion of that submission. Uh, the first tab we're showing you here is that documents tab. There's also one to identify parties in the document to index the works associated with the document that you're submitting to the office, contacts for questions about your submission, and finally a pay and submit tab. Uh, this application uh, form has been designed to guide you through the process. Uh, so as you answer questions in this document section, you'll be prompted to uh, provide answers that will help uh, attest to the certification uh, of certain documents and to provide any additional information that you need. There is an online help available throughout the system uh, in that flyout that we're showing right here that will provide a little bit of additional context 
And we've tried to write this in plain English as much as possible, as well as provide links to external sources for additional details and information. Uh, we skipped over some of the other tabs and arrived on the pay and submit portion of the recordation system workflow. At the top, we'll see an online payment collection. Uh, this screenshot is showing the pay.gov selection where um, once you have gone through the rest of the steps on this page, you'll be taken to pay.gov where you can pay with a credit card, debit card, or by ACH payment. Uh, you will note that there's a deposit account option there. We'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, but I will note at this point that that is for a recordation system specific deposit account. Uh, below that, you see a brief summary uh, of the type of filing, the two parties, and the number of works. There's also a button there that you can click to review the application before submitting to the office to make sure that uh, all of the questions that we've asked have been answered appropriately and that you're satisfied with the information that will be indexed. Uh, there's a section where you can request special handling uh, if it's needed, and then the fees for that will show up along with the other fees uh, down in the breakdown of that fee section at the bottom of the screen. Over on the right-hand side, we see the certify and checkout where you're uh, assigned an SR number, Again, there's a brief summary of the document that's being submitted to the office, as well as a total. There is the question about certifying authority to submit, as well as a place to sign and date before submitting to the office. Now, here we're looking at an application review for a submission. Uh, at the very top, the font is a little bit small, but we do have a create date, a submission date, uh, a status that says pending review and an expected recordation date that is presented uh, before your review. There is a payment confirmation where you'll see the transaction type uh, and other assorted information about your payment transaction. Below that, the fee breakdown again that we saw from the previous screen. And then below a section for application documents where you can again uh, open up a, a PDF of your application to review that as well as the document that you are submitting to the office to ensure that that is the, indeed the document that you wanted to submit. Uh, there's also a section where you can review your works upload spreadsheet if you have used one to provide indexed information to the office, as well as a preview of the public record which shows what your information may look like if your submission is approved by the office. This is really handy to make sure that the indexing information you've provided uh, as well as the party information will appear as you expect it to submitting it through the, through the system. So we would like to note that all of the system forms that you need to successfully submit a document for recordation are found and contained within the system. Uh, there is a true and correct copy certification. There is a recordation eligibility certification, and there is a works upload spreadsheet that we provide to upload indexing information for the works identified within your document. So no DCS form is required. Uh, all the forms can be found within the system. And speaking of the works upload spreadsheet, uh, we have built in validation to the recordation system so that when using the, uh, the works upload spreadsheet, if there is an error in any of the information that you've supplied, you'll get immediate feedback on any of those upload errors uh, with error location and some suggestions on resolving those errors. Uh, you'll see the screenshot here that there's a, a triangle flagging that error, and then we've provided the row and column and column label, uh, as well as an error description for where the system found errors in the works upload spreadsheet to help you go back and correct those errors to be able to try to re-upload that information properly. Uh, again, we mentioned this briefly, but the new recordation system provides digital delivery of recordation documents, such as the certificate and the number document. So again, uh, you'll be able to access those through your portal into the recordation system. And you see a screenshot here showing the ability to download that certificate, of which we provided a, uh, a brief screenshot of over on the right-hand side as well as to be able to download that number document. And once your document has been approved by the office and pushed through to the public record, 
you can click the last link down there, which will open up uh, a view of the public record in a new window to be able to confirm the information has been received and published by the office. So let's talk briefly about corrections and amplifications. Uh, one of the things that we're, we're very proud to announce about the recordation system is that once a document has been submitted, uh, the recordation system may allow the remitter to make corrections at a number of different phases of the recordation process. So um, prior to that document review, you have the ability to change uh, a number of things about your submission, including the document itself. Uh, during the review, you can change some indexing information and after publication to the public catalog, you can also make updates and changes. Uh, this is much more challenging with the paper process. And so we're happy to facilitate this with the recordation system. Uh, so let's move on to, into some questions that we've heard since our initial webinar on modernizing the recordation system uh, a little while ago. So we mentioned limited functionality in that original webinar. And so people have asked, what does that really mean? Uh, so what that means is that the current recordation system is limited to transfers of copyright ownership and other documents pertaining to copyright under Section 205 of Title 17. Uh, we are planning on adding new functionality as the system evolves to permit the recordation of additional document types uh, as we move forward. But at the moment, uh, it is only Section 205 under Title 17. So if documents are submitted electronically, will they be reviewed more quickly than paper documents? Um, so documents submitted through the recordation system are reviewed as they are received by our recordation division staff. The paper documents follow a different workflow and process. Um, I, I will note that I think I mentioned earlier in the webinar that mail does take a while to physically arrive here on Capitol Hill. And so um, there is a kind of built-in delay right there before uh, examiners even get a chance to see any documents that you submit through the mail. Uh, as opposed to submitting through the recordation system, they arrive electronically and are accessed much more quickly. Um, item seven in the special pilot program rules uh, does state that no submission may be made both electronically and in paper uh, unless approved by the office. And, and again, I'll note that we're thrilled that uh, what we've seen so far is that most documents are recorded in a matter of weeks as opposed to the months it may take through the paper process. Uh, so again, I did mention that deposit account that we showed in the screenshot earlier. Uh, and so a lot of people do have an existing copyright off deposit account and want to know if they can use that deposit account for the recordation system. Now, unfortunately, we cannot link existing deposit accounts to the recordation system. Um, again, you'll need to create a new recordation system specific deposit account through pay.gov for any submissions through the system. Um, when accessing pay.gov, you can fund that deposit account through credit card or ACH payments. Um, but again, the deposit accounts that you currently may have with the copyright office for use in the ecosystem uh, are only available uh, for those payments. If you'd like to pay electronically for recordation system, you'll need to go through pay.gov to either make a one-time payment or to establish a recordation system specific deposit account. Uh, so this gets into the questions about um, registration numbers for recorded documents. So um, sometimes people will need to record documents for works that are currently being examined by the office. Uh, and so you may only have a service request number instead of a registration number. So if your, uh, the document you're recording has some works that are still be at pending registration, um, you can, after you submitted the document to the office, initiate a post-examination correction after that uh, document has been approved and closed. If you go to that application review screen that uh, we looked at earlier, there's a dropdown that you can select where you can uh, check correct this SR and you'll be able to provide updated indexing information for that document. So what are the next steps? Um, we advise keeping an eye on the copyright recordation page. Uh, the office will be publishing a new recordation system page that contains all of this information and more. 
Uh, on that page, you'll find a link to a monthly recordation system webinar where we host many more frequently asked questions and provide a live Q&A for uh, any questions that come up for people who would like to join. So you'll be able to find the link to sign up for that monthly recordation system webinar on the new recordation system page when that is uh, available on copyright.gov. On that page, you'll also find a link to the special pilot program rules that you'll be able to review before joining the recordation system. There will also be a link to frequently asked questions as well as some tutorial videos that will help you navigate your way through the recordation system. Lastly, uh, we'd advise that you sign up for a Newsnet. We will definitely be announcing the release of the system to the public on Newsnet. So if you haven't already, definitely sign up for the Newsnet to get that announcement in your inbox and to be able to click that link to get access to the new recordation system. So I think that brings us to the end of the presentation for today's webinar. Uh, again, we hope to see you uh, later this summer in the new recordation system. Uh, again, subscribe to that Newsnet and I'd be happy to hand it back over to Steve now to see if we have any questions to address. Thank you very much, Sean. Now we can start with the Q&A. So just as a reminder, you can submit questions using the Q&A panel access by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And as a reminder, we may not be able to answer all the questions that are submitted today. We are getting good amounts. So let's start with the first one. Um, so the question happens, uh, questions about uh, current pilot users. Uh, what will happen to a, a pilot user's login uh, and separate deposit accounts when this opens up? Hey Steve, um, I'd be happy to, to take that question. Um, so current users of the recordation system will not be uh, affected. Uh, the office is simply opening up access to the general public. Uh, so there will be no changes to any existing users uh, accounts uh, or setup. Great. Um, and the next question we have, uh, actually there's two parts of it. Um, first part is going to be when this goes to the full public, is will someone be able to join deposit accounts with the registration system? And um, yeah, again, there was another question about uh, joining those accounts. So there'll be two deposit, or the, will the people still have two deposit accounts, one for recordation and one for everything else? So Steve, um, I can't speak specifically to how the registration system is developing, but I do expect that um, as we are looking for an enterprise copyright system, that we will have one unified way to pay for services from the copyright office. Great. Um, and we also received a couple of questions about uh, the browsers. So one person asked, uh, is Safari going to be support supported uh, by the system? And then one person specifically asked about Internet Explorer and why wasn't Internet Explorer um, supported? But Sean, you want me to take this? Sure, Mike, thank you. All right, um, so yes, yeah, Safari is supported as a browser. And Internet Explorer itself is not supported, but we do support Microsoft's newest browser, Edge. Uh, Microsoft themselves are dropping support for Internet Explorer, but we will continue to support Microsoft's latest browser, which is, again, Microsoft Edge. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. I'll, I'll note that I've also had zero issues using Safari um, personally to access the system. And uh, this was mentioned several times, but uh, the question came in again about will with the with the uh, recordation system will it be faster to record a document steve um, i can reiterate that uh, to this point uh, we've seen submissions from the recordation system uh, be resolved in a matter of weeks as opposed to the months that it takes for the paper submission process um, and that those two submission uh, two processes rather are totally separate um, so in our experience so far, uh, documents submitted through the recordation system have been returned back to their original remitters uh, much more quickly. We did get a question about login.gov. So Mike, hopefully you'll be able to answer this. Um, for login.gov, will we have separate logins for personal and business purposes? 
Um, you can. That's that's more of a decision you need to make on your own. Um, you know, if you're representing your business when interacting with our systems, I would recommend you use your business account. Um, we don't require separate ones, though. It's a single identity as far as we're concerned. Here's a, a question about uh, certificates. Um, will the office send the number, document, and certificate by email, or can I access them directly from the recordation system? Uh, the short answers are no and yes. Um, so we, we saw a screenshot in there where once you've logged in to the portal, you'll be able to access PDFs of the certificate. Oh, here we go. Here's that screenshot. So um, in this case, right on that left-hand side, you're seeing a snapshot of the specific uh, submission to the office where you can go in and you'll be able to download that certificate as a PDF or open it up in a new viewer. Uh, same thing for the numbered document. Um, and so the office will not be sending those out, but you will be able to access those through the system. Great. Um, I have received a few questions about um, the presentation today and the slides. Um, just to let everyone know, this is being recorded. And when it is processed, we do plan on placing this in a PDF of the slides you saw today up on our website uh, for you to access. Will there be a specific box to check for grants of security interest like the USPTO has? I can, I can jump in. This is um, Nick Bartel from OGC, our Office of General Counsel. Um, if you'd like to indicate a type of documentation, it won't necessarily be the same functionality as what PTO has, but you can certainly indicate that there's a grant of security interest or whatever the type of document is. There's different check boxes and then even um, if it, it falls into an other type of document, you can indicate that and specify. Um, and then our next question is, can I change the document file after it has been submitted? Hey, Steve, this is Sylvester. I'll, I'll take that one. Thank you. Um, once you have uploaded the document itself um, for recordation in the system, um, you cannot pull it back. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, that'll be it for that particular submission. Um, however, um, if you if that is done and, it's, and you realize that it's been um, 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 an incorrect document, you would need to submit another another submission um, to to make that correction, um, to have that particular um, to have the one that you wanted recorded, um, updated into the system. Hey Steve, um, yeah, I, I will I will add on to um, Sylvester's answer that we do provide a way to review the application before submitting to the office, including the document that you're about to submit. So that's a wonderful place to double check that you're submitting the correct indexing information and the correct document, since the document cannot be changed um, once it gets to an examiner. Um, I would also like to note that if you are using special handling in the recordation system, um, that skips the queue and goes directly to an examiner. So um, definitely use that application review functionality if you're submitting through special handling because there will be no opportunity to change that document uh, for special handling since it goes directly to the uh, Copyright Office recordation staff. And, oh, thank you very much for that, uh, both for both those answers. Um, and the next one is, will the electronic system be able to send content uh, one day for copyright registration when it's longer than 10,000 words? So Steve, I think um, the, the question is referring to the 10,000 works, works limit oh. that I noted. Um, I'm not sure if it was a, a, a misunderstanding. Um, maybe I poorly communicated that, or it perhaps may have been a typo in the question that came in. Um, but again, the, the current system uh, can only accommodate up to 10,000 works per document submitted. Um, we did note that if you have more than 10,000 works for the document to uh, use the paper process for that, we are looking forward to being able to accommodate more than uh, 10,000 works in the recordation system um, as the office's new copyright public record system evolves when those two are connected. Great. Um, and here, uh, another question about uh, recordation accounts. And can a company link multiple recordation accounts to one deposit account? Yes. So um, we did mention briefly the concept of an organization. So the recordation system allows you to create uh, an organization by a primary user and invite other users to join that organization. 
um, members of an organization have the ability to view the filings of other members of the organization, as well as share access to a deposit account so that uh, you may have one person in an organization who funds the deposit account and then three or four others that are actively filing submissions with the office that use that account to pay. We do have uh, a bit of or guidance on how to set up an organization that will also be available as a downloadable PDF on the new recordation system page when that's published live. Great. Um, and I know you've talked about this before, but it seems like people are excited to know when this will be uh, available. So when will the new recordation page be linked on the copyright website? So I believe that's the recordation system page. Yeah, we're looking for that uh, next month. So in July of 2022, we're open to release that uh, to the public, update the web pages, publish the new uh, copyright recordation system web page, and, uh, and make that announcement on Newsnet. Fantastic. Um, and uh, this is a question I believe will go to our uh, to Nick. Um, Nick, could you just explain what Section 205 is, and um, when will registration be available for new creative works? I assume that means a registration for the ECS. So yeah, I, I can answer the the first part because I do understand maybe not everyone on the webinar is as familiar with the Title 17, but Section 205 of the Copyright Act is basically the the main recordation um, provision that allows you to record transfers of copyright and um, other documents relating to copyright. So um, for the present, that is those are the only types of documents, but that is a broad array of different documents. Um, that you can record in the system. The, as we mentioned, I think earlier, we'll also be developing, and I think are in the process of developing the system so, it's so that it will be able to record um, notices of termination, which fall under other provisions, sections 203 and 304 of the Copyright Act. Um, and the registration provision, I'm sorry, I can't answer, and it's a little afield from what we're discussing today, but we appreciate the question. Great. And um, so here's a question about public records. So will public records for paper, paper uh, or paper and online input be integrated together? Hey, Steve, happy to take that. Um, so the, the answer is that they, they are at the moment. Um, any documents submitted through the paper process end up in the Copyright Office public catalog. Uh, and same thing goes for documents submitted electronically through the recordation system. Um, so they are both currently integrated and can be found in the Copyright Office's public catalog, as well as in the office's new copyright public record system. Uh, fantastic. And here's a question about fees. So will the fee for recordation based on the number of titles be the same for the recordation system? So I don't have the link handy, but I'm pretty sure the fee schedule is at copyright.gov slash about slash fees. Um, and there's a, a section over on the right hand side where it speaks directly to fees for documents submitted electronically. Um, Nick, please feel free to, to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. I know you've worked with some of the, the fee information as well, but I think that's where it's located. And I think that's the section that governs submissions through the recordation system. That, that's right, Sean. I'll just um, add that, uh, you know, for anyone that was submitting previously using, <laughs> excuse me, using electronic title lists, um, the electronic fee schedule is what applies to um, recordation using the electronic system. Uh, and I think, as mentioned, maybe on an earlier slide, there's a fee calculator within the system. So it does some of the work or all of the work, I think, for the remitters. Um, in terms of calculating the number of works, alternate titles, et cetera. Great, thank you very much. Um, and here's a question about submissions. Uh, can someone submit the recordation PDF only without the spreadsheet? I'll jump in again here, Steve. I think what the, the person may be asking here is whether they can record a document without submitting um, the works upload spreadsheet. And yes, we can, there's a way to manually enter um, works information relating to them. So the spreadsheet is an option for providing information about the works. Great. And I think this is going to be our, we have one more final question. Um, what document types are supported by the recordation system? 
Hey, Steve, I, I'll take that. So it's, it's going to be pretty much everything that everything that's handled um, um, uh, under 205 uh, assignments, court orders, um, mortgages. Um, uh, you know, there's a listing. Um, you, you know, with you know within our website pertaining to basic 205 submissions um, for recordation. So the pretty much the standard ones that you know that are um, that are being submitted in by paper, um, except obviously the NOTs and um, DOMW. So yeah. yeah, thanks, Sean, for that list right there. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, I believe that that will bring us to the end of today's webinar. So when you sign out of the session, uh, we do encourage you to take part in a brief survey regarding your experience. Uh, we use your submissions to improve our webinar program, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. And I wanna say thank you all for your participation today, and we hope to see you again at future uh, webinars. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.